Guys, well, we've got the genius, Pep Guardiola coming on. Yes, he's made me more or less cry a couple of times throughout my career. Um, he managed teams against us, but listen, you can do nothing but marvel at what he's done as a manager in this game. Great to spend time with him, but also we've got his centre-back, Colossal at the moment, performing miracles, clean sheets, on that win run, Ruben Diaz. Stay tuned. I said to Messi, Messi, Messi attacked the back post, the far post to Rio. <laughs> attacked oh, the, <laughs> attack the far post to go there. Pep, thank you very much for, for giving us some of your time. I know you're very busy with all the fixtures that are coming <clears> up <throat> thick and fast. Let me take you back to the 21st of November. Your team last suffered a defeat on that date, 2-0 away to Spurs, to leave you eight points behind in the league table. Since then, it's been an incredible run. What, what has changed from that moment with your team? Well, in that moment, uh, we realized we were not uh, we were not brilliant. Everything was was heavy in terms of was not natural. So we adjust something, and especially to put more players in front of the box. But especially was the day after the West Brom at home, when we draw one one, we could have win. But after the game, I went to myself and my my staff and friends. I said, I don't like the team. I don't like the way we play. It doesn't matter the results, I don't like it. I don't recognize my team the way you should play. And we just come back to the principles, A, B, C, that's all. So wingers high and wide and uh, a lot of plays in the middle and uh, come back without the ball, run like, uh, like an animal and with the ball be more calm, be more passes, help think about more in the what we have to do and instead to, to think about the results. The quality, the players, and win one game. The confidence, you know that. Another one, another one, another one. But I think the West Brom, I reflect and I said, I don't like, I don't like at all what I'm, I'm watching. And, and uh, what, what, yeah. what, can you give us a little bit of insight? Like, what, what type of thing was that you didn't like? Uh, we ran too much. We were not in the position. We ran too much. Everyone move right, left, left, right, right, move without no, knowing <laughs> exactly what we have to do with the ball. Our strength is when we had the ball, everybody knows exactly where are their teammates on the pitch. And that helped us, help us to be more calm, use the process. Of course, without the ball, every I think the team always was ready to fight without the ball, always have energy enough to, but with the ball, we were not good. We were not good. We were so, we won't attack in 10 passes, in four passes, just attack, attack. And so quick, so quick, everyone was so quick. And football has to be some pause. And after to change the rhythm. If you play a high, higher rhythm, and after you cannot surprise the opponent. And this is what we, we come back a little bit. And what we have done the previous seasons, with, with David Silva was here with 100 points, 98 points. Every, our game was more calm, more, more in one rhythm to change a little bit in the final third. And, uh, and we come back in that principles. That, 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 and the quality of the players make the, the rest. Is, is that one of the reasons why Cancelo has gone into the midfield area when he, he's obviously a fullback? You've gone back to what you've done at Bayern with Kimmich and putting the fullback inside to thicken up the pitch and make more bodies in midfield. Is that one of the reasons you've done that? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah but with Fabian Delph, we did it before the previous season. With Sinchenko, with Alex, we have done before. It's not it's just to, to put players, you know, to pass the ball in position that we believe is interesting. To surprise the opponents, and of course Joao can do it for the, his skills, the quality, like Fabian Delph has done before, and, and and Alex. So yeah, we did with Joao, and last game, for example, against West Ham, Alex did, did this position. So yeah, it depends on the opponent, depends on the skills of our players, we can do it. Mm. And, and the defence, obviously I was a defender, so I'm always interested <laughs> to see how your defence plays and stuff. And I think over the last couple of seasons, you've had injuries, change of personnel. Ruben Diaz has come in now. You've gone from a team conceding 0.92 goals per game to 0.6 per game. Is this one of the areas you're most pleased with as well? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know better than me how important it is to be solid. The confidence you give to the rest of the of the team, you know, when your strikers and holding midfielders, they leave, they play, think, OK, behind I have a good keeper and behind I have a two guys there or back four, like, the difference of last season, because the way we're training, the way we prepare, the way we defend is the same. The same for years that we don't miss, we don't, we don't concede mistakes. We, the opponents are good. They can score a goal. Congratulations. It's happened. It's football. <laughs> we, you know, it's, it's normal, but we don't, we, we, before, especially last season, we give them 
the guys score a goal. Yeah. That we, the big margin on improved this season it was like this. So the opponents has to score because they are good, but we not give them the chance so easily to score a goal. So that is the big improve from Ruben, I mean John as well, John especially. So of course Kyle not right now and the left back. So everyone is 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 doing better. You mentioned there, John and Ruben, their partnership has been magnificent so far. How pleased have you been with, with, with Ruben Diaz's impact, but also the resurrection of, of John Stones, who wasn't playing, who was out of the team? And, and in terms of Ruben, what's been his biggest qualities that he's brought to your team? The biggest one is that he's a central defender, like lead the line or lead the other ones. He plays good his decisions, but helps to the other one to take a good decisions. And that is when you are become an incredible central defender. He, he doesn't play just thinking in my area, in my player. He's thinking my player, looking right or left and yeah, saying, yeah, what do you yeah. have to do in right or left? It depends what happened. And this is, is a talent, this is skills. There are incredible players like things just in my business, but he's, he cares for the business for the other ones. Not just the back four, even the central defenders, uh, sorry, holding midfielders. Saying right, left, don't stop communicating. You see his body language during 90 minutes. He's leaving the game like it was the action, like it was the last one. And uh, and he makes better his partner. He makes better his partner. And this is so difficult to find in the world football. You, you've been here for a long time now, one of your longest yeah. stays. Well, this is actually your longest stay at uh, one team as a manager. What, what's been the differences for you, for, like Manchester City, Bayern, and Barcelona? <laughs> the big differences that stand out for you? Well, I was incredibly happy in my hometown, Barcelona, and my team in Bayern Munich. You cannot imagine the club and the city. I'm, I'm a privileged guy to have been there. But here, after reflect four or five years here, I feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel so good now, but I feel so good last season when we didn't win, you know? So I feel good. I have friends. I feel protect. The fans, I feel love from, from them. The, the team follow me. I love to work with them. I have an incredible facilities to work. I hate November, December, January, and February in England because <laughs> I would like <laughs> I would like better weather. I have everything. So everything I have to do my job. So and, and that's why I extend the contract. That is the, reason, the, the only reason why. I'm not saying in Munich, in Munich was not good and in Barcelona, but always when I was in Barcelona and Munich, I have the feeling, the dream to come here, to train in a Shakespeare country, in the Beatles country, in an Oasis <laughs> country, the theater, the movies. So it's, it's not football, it's, this country is special in many, many, many reasons. So, and, and, and I want to leave this, I want to leave it. And once I was there, living with uh, friends because the owner the chairman right now is a friend of mine, but the CEO, the sports director, a friend of mine from the period from Barcelona, that yeah. makes my life my life so easy because when we win, we are happy. When we lose, I don't feel uh, why we lose. The question is, okay, we lose. What can we do to get him better? So was, was that a big difference? Was that a big yeah. difference from the other clubs at Barca and yeah. Bayern? There's heavy pressure compared to here. Yeah, in Barca, especially in our country, you are judged for the results. And he as well, but they don't tell you, you win, you are good, you lose, you are bad. They'll tell you, okay, you don't win, what do you have to do to, to get him better? And all together, take the right decisions. And that's why the journalist knows that, and I think the players know that. And uh, you know, the manager is the weak point of the, you know, all escalating the position in the team, the, is the weak point. And when the, everybody knows I am protected, after I am free to take the right decisions, I think for the, for the team, for the club. You mentioned you extended your contract there. Can you give us a bit of insight as to what was the unfinished business? Was it the Champions League? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I will give my my pre this pressure for the rest of my time here in England. I know it. So, if if uh, if we don't get at the end the last stage as we go through, will be unfinished business. I know it. I accept it. And and I am when everyone say that is because maybe. Maybe it's right, but it's not just about that. Is I had the feeling we can play better with uh, some new players and and extend the way we play it and uh, the quality. Sometimes we can do do it longer, extend it longer. So and of course, but I cannot deny it. I would love and I would like what we have done in the Premier League to be incredible, consistent during four years. Incredible because last season was not bad in terms of results. The difference it was an incredible team that make 99 points. 
and but the fourth season was incredible in uh, in uh, Carabao Cups in FA Cups. I cannot deny we was I was not able we were not able to do it in Europe and hopefully in this season the next ones we can make the next step. What's held you back? Do you think because like you say you've been able to create some of the best teams that we've ever seen in the Premier League. Um, so how has that not been able to transfer to the Champions League? Because essentially for one inch we are out because. We, yeah. we have five meters to shoot the goal uh, without keeper and go out. So yeah. it's Details. completely different. Yeah, it's it's you know that you you, leave, you you know in Champions League you won a Champions League in the finals in penalties in uh, I think in Moscow yeah. and Man United won in No Camp. I was a teenager. I was there watching the game. It was one zero down in two minutes to score a goals, mm. and you analyze it's incredible success for one minute, two goals when you score no score. So it's happened. That is Champions League. And you have to accept, as a manager of football players, is what it is. And when you don't win it, you have to accept it. You are not good enough or lucky or whatever. So I think that is a little bit the difference. And, and because in Europe as well, the quality of the strikers and the teams are so, so good. So you're going to Madrid, Bayern Munich, uh, Liverpool, and uh, now PSG. And they are exceptional, exceptional, you know, exceptional teams. When I, when I watch your teams play, I always like to look at, when it's live especially, and I'm fortunate to come to the guys, I always like to look at your area and where you're patrolling. And I see your intensity and that constant desire to, the game just consumes you. How do you keep that going? Does, does, does football just consume your life at all times? Because that's how it seems to people that don't know you. Is that true or is that, is that a myth? No, I, I would say I'm scared to lose the games. This is the first to make me be in tension. And second one, hopefully in a few years when I will have the age from Carlo or uh, Crystal Palace manager. So <laughs> hopefully hopefully I can control myself better than I control. I'm not proud of this, but the intention and when I see something I don't like, I should control and react in that way. But this, when I see when I was football player in Barcelona, I react in the same way. So it's my personality. I'm not faking that way. I apologize many times for my players, my behavior, but it's, it's what it is. So I am like this. I want to, they have to do it well. When we prepare, they have to do well and I push them to do it well. So the human being have a tendency to relax. And in this team with me, this is not going to happen. So they have to do it better and better. It's even situations like after games when I see like in the FA Cup final in 2019, Straight away, Raheem Sterling, you're talking to him like it seems like you're talking to him about in-game tactics. Kimmich, I see you do it, to do it after a Champions League game or Bundesliga game. That intensity, like, I feel that for me personally, I would love to be able to play under that and receive that type of attention to detail. Do the player, are the players good with that? I love, and uh, I love, I love this game a lot. And sometimes in the game, when you are, you remember that action especially, and he remembered the players, is the good moment to tell in this situation, you have to solve it in this way on the opposite side. You can wait normally the day after, or when you are in the, in the canteen, or we are in the meeting room, or wherever you can talk. But sometimes there, when you talk it, you have always there are margin to improve. The problem today in the society, in the players, myself, is living for what you have done. In the football and the sport in general, Look the big athletes, the tennis, Nadal, uh, Federer, Djokovic, uh, Levron James, and all the big athletes is thinking the next one, the next one. They don't live about what they have done or, uh, you know, uh, saying how good it is. So what's next? What's next? The greatest go to the shower after win a title, they are thinking in the next one. So, and, and, and you cannot stop. Uh, if you like it, it's not a, it's not a stress, it's not a something like is difficult it's just natural we can do better you know you see that it is not important is they don't receive it or get it like a a punishment like a, a something they have done wrong it's always to to improve to to get better to make the strong more solid to to try to achieve more titles this is the only target i love it you have a young talent phil foden He's, oh, you get asked about him a lot, I'm sure you're sick and tired of it. But one element that I'd like to touch upon is that I was probably one of the guys that was saying, because he wasn't getting lots of opportunities early, maybe it would be good for him to go out on loan. Do you still feel what you've done was the perfect scenario for him? Because he's playing fantastically well now. Yeah, well, we thought we thought he had everything to play with us, even with 20 years old. So it doesn't matter if you have 25 or 20. If you have the skills and the talent, you can play. I think he was enough patient to have the moment and he has to continue to be patient. And he believes and don't listen much what the beautiful and 
well prepared pundits like you, Rio, <laughs> and not listen too much <laughs> and stay focused what he has improved and uh, he will be an exception. He is a top, top player, but still he's playing football in one rhythm and he has to combine different rhythms to be an exceptional player. And he make all the actions in one wow, an explosion. And when you play in the middle, you have to be more calm, more calm for after an explosion. But maybe it's because he's 20 years old. He have an incredible energy to eat the world, to do everything. And this is normal. And this is not because I'm saying you have to be in different rhythm is going to change now. No, the time, the, the seasons, the game by games by game, he will realize what can improve in that position. The rest, the rest is a top player and uh, because he's so good in his individual action, but he has to understand the game in a global when you want to play in the middle. And still, for not because he cannot do it, it's just because he has 20 years old. The moment we have every player with 28 is better than 20, for sure. And uh, but he has the desire, the potential. He loves that club, and uh, I am pretty sure if he's one player, he can do it. He's he's the one. Good, good. Listen, I, I can't finish an interview without just touching on Rome and Wembley. Do you realize oh. what you've done to us? That day has scarred us for life, man. I said, I said to Messi, Messi, Messi attacked the back post, the far post to Rio. <laughs> attacked oh, the, <laughs> attack the far post to go there. <laughs> oh my God. No, we were lucky. The first 10, 15 minutes was 2 0 for you, my friend. We were lucky the first 10 minutes. Uh, Cristiano, the free kick, and the other ones. PK, and, PK uh, say one off the line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe uh, it. Yeah, no. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was an honor to play against United, you know, the finals. Of course, we, we beat them, of course. Good memories for us, of course, good memories. Exactly. Well, listen, that's a good way for you to finish. I want to leave you on a confident note. So, listen, thank you very much, Fred. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Thank you, Rio. All the best. Good luck. Bye-bye. Hi, Ruben. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you doing? Uh, all good. All good. Uh, I've already said it. Pleasure to be interviewed by you. <laughs> no, no, good. Thanks for, thanks for coming, man. Well, listen, let's start it off on the way we want to go. Defensive revolution at Manchester City. How has this happened? The season started quite rocky. What has changed? Essentially, in, in my individual uh, part on it, it, it was just about connect, connecting with the guys, knowing the guys, knowing the team, knowing the manager. And uh, obviously the times were not perfect when I came, but one thing that caught my attention was the, even though things were not going perfect, you, you would see the desire to turn it around. You would see the desire to, to make it different to, so that things might uh, begin to happen again. And, and that just gave me like, for me that I've just arrived to, to a new club, to a new team, that just gave me the, the fire I needed to, to give it all for, for everybody. Obviously, I was just I had just arrived and, and I had my own fire. But uh, to see to see a team that even though things were not going so well, uh, you could see in their faces they they wanted so bad. Everybody wanted it. Uh, I think that that was like a major a major uh, thing for me. As the manager, since you've been there, has he been focusing on the defense in training, or has it just been a partnership with you and Stones that has just come naturally? I think the the this defensive role of the team it just came naturally. Obviously, uh, we all know Pep. I've just been been learning and been knowing him better and better every day, and he's just a person that is just in love for the game, uh, and and he makes you even if you love it, he makes you love it even more. Uh, the, the the way he sees, the way he sees the game the way he, the solutions he presents to you to to fight with every team that comes it just makes you enjoy the game more when you're while while you're playing it so I think all of it and it's like you say when you defend better you attack better when you attack better you defend better I think that the most the the most powerful thing we might have done it was just to keep keep doing what we what we know and what we believe in and i think that was a, a major turning point so so manchester city in in the last few years when the successful period came vincent company was a huge part of that captain uh, leader um he's obviously gone there's a void there now what's their pressure on your shoulders you felt filling that void as well as obviously the the big big transfer fee 
I'll be honest with you, uh, I felt zero pressure because it, I couldn't have more pressure from anyone else than the one I put in myself. So uh, that helped me and has helped me since I've begun playing football. People love to, now are now uh, lots, lots of people are comparing me to Vincent in the, if I can be the replacement. I think it, 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 it makes no sense. I understand why people do it, but Honestly, for me, uh, you cannot want to replace a uh, company. You can't compare me to a company because of all uh, that he has done. He won, he won almost everything, uh, and if not everything. Uh, and uh, for, how, for how long he was here, uh, he, I think you cannot compare him to, to anyone. But uh, I've just arrived and I have to make my own path uh, besides from... from what Vincent did and and I think that's the the best way for me to show respect for 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 me and for everyone else to show respect from for what he did uh, for this club uh, and now it's just time for me to to make my own path that's well said um, I've been fortunate enough to speak to John Stones your partner um, he spoke very well of you um, how you had a good impact on the team I've just spoken to Pep Guardioli your manager as well and the common denominator between both of them was that you enable other players to play better as well. You make players feel more comfortable around you. You're a leader. You're a great communicator. Um, you're intense. Would you agree with all that? I'm just I'm just a player that tries to to play. I just try to play my role the best I can, and it's always about just making sure nothing fails, making sure everybody is focused, making sure everybody is on the same page. And, and it's not many times it's not about you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done this. Just get together with the team and we will solve it for you. You make a mistake, no problem. The team will solve it. And I think uh, essentially that's the spirit I, I just brought more and more. That's like positive, positive leadership. Is that something that you've had since you was a kid or something that's developed over the years? It's something that I've always had and has, uh, has always been enforced from my father. Since I was a young kid, I always had my, my way of, of being like, uh, I would like to, to control everything that was around me so that to make sure we win because I'm a defender and I want to make sure the team, the team will be there for me. Uh, and attacking and defending, and and everybody is right er, is ready to fight for each other. So you talk about goals that you scored at the weekend. Congratulations, by the way. You, you celebrated that in style. I've seen you celebrating defensive actions. Um, me being a centre back, I know exactly how you feel about that. What ones what means more to you? Celebrating a defensive action or celebrating a goal like you did at the weekend? Oof, difficult. <laughs> I would say fifty fifty. <laughs> Now, obviously, you, you know those games when, when you just feel impenetrable and you just start celebrating simple cuts like it's a, your own goal. For me, uh, the point of view, on the point of view of just love to defend, the heart of defending, I would consider that sometimes more important than a goal because for the team, that represents everything. And whenever you don't concede, you're just so much closer, so much closer to, to win. But obviously, uh, I love to score goals and I know how important it is for the team also. Just we have the best example just from this weekend, uh, what happened with me and John. And, and I think that that is also a, a very important part for the team when you want to go big. So I would say 50-50. So we, we talked about defending and stuff. Since coming to the Premier League, are there, is there any things that have surprised you from a defender's point of view that you, thought, you never really thought about when you was in, in Portugal playing compared to coming here to the Premier League? That there's something that's come out and you've gone, whoa, I didn't, I didn't expect that. And you've had to kind of work on that. These are also, these are also things that I would, I would know already. Just I expand, experienced them for the first time because when I was a kid, uh, watching Premier League was my dream uh, weekend, uh, my dream Sunday. Uh, many games I've watched from you, Vidic, company, Terry, pff, I could go uh, on an infinite list. And from there you just start learning. And, and uh, I learn a lot from what I hear, from what I see. 
And just by watching it, I start to understand the, the, the league, the way you play. Like I said, I've been watching it for, for years, so I kind of know, knew already what I was coming for. Uh, and then I would say just the thing that uh, makes the whole difference is how competitive it is. So, so who, who for you, and since you've been here in the Premier League, has been the most difficult opponent you've played against, striker? I, I could not say one. I could not say one. It's like, it's like... I, <laughs> That's it's, the competitive nature from you. You're not going to give anyone the green light as to say he's the hardest. <laughs> no, it's like when they ask me if I've got a... What's the, the most difficult striker you've played against? I can't say because... First of all, that's what that's it, uh, that is what he said. <laughs> I can't give <laughs> I can't give it away. Uh, and and but there's also like it would be unfair for for many others if I would say one name because some guys they they're just good at one thing or two or three, and all of all of them are different. Some are good at heading. Some are fast in space. Some are wonderful receiving in the feet. Uh, you have many different types and you end up just having to be a very versatile player to be on top. And uh, for that reason, I could not say this one is better because he heads better and this one is it's better because he, uh, he runs faster. I've always prepared my game to, to, be, to be ready to respond to every different aspect of the game. So I can't say one name. So listen, everyone wants to know, listen, 20 straight wins in all comps, Longest ever winning streak uh, by a top flight side. 27 games unbeaten. Um, one short of your longest ever for Man City. 13 clean sheets in the last 20 in all competitions. Unbelievable, right? Listen, is the quadruple on? Obviously, me and everyone in the team is happy. I would like to save that for, for the end of it all. Then we will make, make the real stats and then we will see the real numbers. Now it's still in process. The moment we, we start to think it's something fantastic before it's finished, it, will, it won't be so fantastic at the end. It's true. Listen, well, listen, your mindset, I love it. Um, I wish you all the best. You've had a fantastic impact so far, man. Long may it continue for you and your team. And good luck, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.